We're talking week 10 in the NFL, which is actually going to be behind us after tonight's game. Monday Night Football, Miami and the LA Rams. Greg DePama here from our lads, our lad senior analyst joining me, Jim Feist from Jim Feist Sports and ProLine TV. You can check out the ProLine TV YouTube channel and also the our lads football channel. So, uh, Jim, good to have you on, and it's good to kind of recap uh, what happened in the NFL over the weekend. Well, <laughs> good, to, good to see you, Greg. Uh, nice to be doing this on an early Monday. Uh, big game ahead of us today with the Rams and Miami, but uh, I can speak freely. The, the NFL is in, in some ways it's a real shit show. <laughs> yeah. Not only do you have terrible refereeing. Yes. Uh, missed calls, calls that don't exist. Quarterbacks that can't play coaches that can't coach, but not to be too critical, which I know that sounded very critical. Some of these people are learning their jobs and they will get better in time. Like we all have, well, hell, I've been doing this for six decades, so it's taken me a while to get where I'm at. You know, you look at these games, the Giants in Carolina and Germany. I mean, I really feel bad for the people in Germany that actually sit through this thing, but they like to drink a lot of beer. They so, had fun. Yeah. You know, I'm sure great. they, you know, and they had a little extra time in the game. Yeah. It'll, you know, so they, they get to drink more beer. But, it, I mean, these are bad teams. And, I mean, arguably Carolina is the worst team in football, but maybe now Chicago is, or maybe the Jets are. And I know you being a fan of the Jets, oh, we, so we're now. not allowed to talk about Give that. Give me that first-round draft pick, baby. Aaron Rodgers is a fraud. He's well oh, overpaid. He's a, he's a high-paid fraud. The guy's great quarterback, great arm strength, great everything. Very accurate, fantastic talent, but this is this is beyond belief. You talk about mismanaged teams, owners that don't know what the they know how to make a lot of money because obviously they're able to buy a, a football team which isn't cheap, and but they've messed up their teams. I mean, the Jets have done it, Carolina's done it, Dallas is the perfect example of somebody that's messed up a, a you know their their franchise, but. They're very wealthy. They know what they're doing in business. They're very talented at what they do know. But then they get the ego-driven the driven decisions that they make, and they just think they know more than they know about, and they think they know everything about everything. So they And they don't. But you really think about it, and I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but I think you want me to anyway. The It's very hard to build a good business. It's very hard to build a super successful business. A, you have to be lucky and you have to be smart. And then you got to be lucky again <laughs> because it takes a lot to be super wealthy. It takes a lot to be successful. It takes a lot to be successful over a long period of time. So when you look at these teams that are successful over a long period of time, which you look at New England, which is a perfect example. When Belichick and Brady were there, they, they had a, a run of, hell, 15 to 17 years, whatever the hell it was. It was pretty damn good. You know, it, but then you look at the Giants and Carolina, and you look at, look at these bad teams that just never seem to pick themselves up off the mat. Look at Indianapolis. They made a change to go into Flacco. Now, Flacco, was he came off the couch last year, and he saved the Browns, took them to the playoffs. Yeah, they got crushed in the first game, but they, he had a hell of a run. And then the Browns don't even offer him a contract. They don't even offer him a contract. He ends up in Indianapolis, played good for a couple of games. Now he's replaced Richardson, who doesn't look like he's ready to play in the NFL. No, no. And he really didn't have much experience in college. And I know you follow college a lot. Yeah. I don't think he played enough games. He, he didn't play talent. enough games. He, no. he is a talented kid. There's, I mean, there's no sure. question about it. He's probably a very nice young man. But Flacco's playing terrible. He yeah, they're going to go back to this week. They're going to go back. They have to. Why? What? What's the purpose of playing them? There's just no purpose no more. See, if Flacco no. would have kept playing well – and they're going to go to the playoffs with Flacco. That's one thing. But now he's not playing well, so they just go back to Richardson. So it, they will. I totally agree. I don't know that they're going to do that. I think they will. I think they'll do it this week. 
And you got to remember, this is the same franchise that had Andrew Luck, who would have been a superstar for all time oh, had yeah. they ever gave him any protection. But he led the league in being hit and being sacked. Yeah. Why? Because this franchise doesn't do the right things. And they have general manager has had years to get them somewhere, and he's never done it, but he still has got his job. I'm not trying to take anybody's job away, but you're paid to do a job, and you're paying you're paid to be successful. That doesn't mean you're going to be successful every day, you, you, but over a period of time, there's enough time given, and you got to make a change. So I mean, it's the same thing with Dallas. There, there are good teams in the league, and we saw a pretty good game yesterday with Pittsburgh and Washington. That was good. That was a great, you know, very. And then the Denver Kansas City game was exciting. The block kick at the end was absolutely amazing. I mean, how how many times can that happen? Atlanta misses all those field goals. I mean, there was a lot of field goals missed yesterday. By the way, I know there was some wind conditions and everything, but it was. was and Minnesota did the same thing. And Minnesota had like almost 500 yards versus Jacksonville. Jacksonville's another garbage dump down there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, and they it's need amazing. to make a lot of change. It, and there's a there's a team that has a lot of money invested in the coach and the quarterback and everything else, and they're not performing. They've nope. got a very wealthy owner that doesn't interfere, but the people that he's hired to be the football people are making – they're just not getting it done. So – And you would have thought that they this, made the right decisions because they drafted a quarterback everybody thought was going to be, well, be a good quarterback, and oh, then they absolutely. hired a coach who won a Super Bowl, but it's not working. So, no, it's, you know, it's, it just shows you that it's it does hard. start – at the top, though, not just head coach, but you have to have a good general manager. You have to have a good front office. You have to have good scouting. It's just a lot more than just a couple of pieces, but a couple of pieces you would think would go a long way in this league, like it does with the Chiefs with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. But, you know, Veach is an underrated GM. Spagnola, as we've talked about, is an excellent defensive coordinator. They've got one of the best special teams coaches in football. So it, it takes more than just those two headpieces, but uh, it's a great start. Usually, it, it's, it's that's what you need at least to get a, you know some sort and of. Uh, then on top, on top of that, you got to multiply it by thirty-two, because you got to do it <laughs> yes. on every team. So you got thirty-two head coaches, thirty-two offensive coordinators, thirty-two defensive yep. coordinators, thirty-two quarterbacks, and thirty-two backup quarterbacks, and then you have to have an offensive line. So that's thirty-two offensive lines, and I mean. It is not easy no. to find that kind of talent nope. and get then get it all grouped together where everybody gets along, everybody respects everybody. I mean, we're seeing chaos. Look at Chicago, number one draft. I mean, they can't they can't get out of their own way right now. Well, it's horrible. They What's made the wrong decision. You know, we uh, look. We were telling our lads. It's funny because. We started talking about this, uh, this uh, like around December of last year when Daniels was playing lights out, Heisman Trophy guy and all that. And at that time, we were talking here at our lads about Daniels being the best quarterback in the draft, that it wasn't going to be Caleb Williams, that it was going to be Daniels. He's the best talent. You should go get him. What do the Bears do? They go and get the, 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 the shiny toy that everybody's in love with, Caleb Williams. <laughs> And that's been a disaster. And then look at look at look how lucky, because it takes luck, like you said, look how lucky Washington was that they didn't take Daniels, that they just had to sit back, let them take Caleb Williams. They get Daniels, and now look at the look at the Washington uh, Commanders this season. Good look at the year before. The f- number one draft choice was uh, the kid's name for um, the quarterback for for uh, oh Carolina. Uh, for Carolina Young. Yeah. Yeah, sure. right. Yeah. And look at who first pick Stroud, and end up Stroud ends up in Texas. Second pick. Yeah. Okay. So in both cases, the second pick is better than the first pick. Yep. Okay. That's why, so it's, uh, it's, that's why there's a lot of luck involved, like you said. Some luck. Tremendous. And and then well with Lawrence, look at what he had as his head coach when he came out of college. That was a mess. His first head coach there oh, that's was true. Right. So he's had what three head coaches, four? I mean, it's in sure. offensive coordinators. You can't do that. It just doesn't work. You can't keep changing and changing. And but but if you don't have the right tool, you got to change. So it's, there's a lot of luck involved in this. So that's where 
I, I always laugh where people the, the, at the beginning of the year and still even to this day, you can bet on over and under wins for the year and people tie up their money making these bets for six months. They put money out there. You know, this team's going to get over 12 wins or yeah. over eight wins. And the money is tied up for six months. Whether you win or lose, it's tied up. You don't have use of that money anymore unless, of course, you're betting on credit, which is very unusual anyway. But it, And then all this garbage happens in the middle. Nothing now, you can do about it. Yep. Now, now, now your money's tied look, up. I mean, look at Pittsburgh. You, you, Pittsburgh goes out and get, gets Russell Wilson, who, by the way, when he came out of college and went to Seattle – I was very high on this guy. And when he got there on, at Pete Carroll, that all worked so well. Go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, and then that crazy play where they should have won the second Super Bowl and they didn't. But in any case, he was it was amazing what they were able to do there. He goes to – then they then it was terrible. He, then he was off. They wanted to get rid of him. He ends up in Denver, and they couldn't do anything. He was horrible there too. Now he goes to Pittsburgh under a very strict head coach. Yep. And guess what? He looks like Russell Wilson again. Yep. He's doing he's doing what everybody thought he could never be able to do again, but it just shows you what coaching does. Absolutely. And, can do. and, and that's it, why if Russell Wilson was what instead of it was instead uh, on the New York Jets he would be looking like Russell Wilson on the Denver Broncos. So probably they, right because the New York Jets are one, are one of those organizations that can't get anything right. Yeah, their their coaching staff is as bad as it is in the NFL. Uh, they have got so much talent, which is a reason that they keep getting. I know it has a, a little bit to do with Aaron Rodgers, and I get it, but the fact that they're favored every week is just so ridiculous. And they keep getting blown out by Arizona and Pittsburgh, teams that are clearly better than them, yet they were favored on game day, which makes no sense. But it's because they are a talented team. The fact is, talent does not win. You have to have good coaching. The Jets are as bad as a coaching staff as there is in the NFL. They're going nowhere this season. That was proof. I think they caught Houston off guard. It was a short week. You know, they weren't playing their best football uh, so that was just one game, one half situation. And it's unfortunate for jet fans, but look, if Woody Johnson, the thing I'm a little bit concerned with there is, is whether or not he's going to completely clean house or is he going to let Joe Douglas keep his job, which he should, because he has drafted a lot of talented players. It's not his fault that he has a really bad coaching staff. Maybe part of it is. But it all depends. I'm not there in the meetings. I don't know who's making these decisions as far as who's hiring who and who, but so forth and so on. But that's the thing. You have to make sure that your owner, first of all, if he's not a Budinsky like uh, Jerry Jones, um, I think Woody Johnson is is like one of these guys that's just an average owner in a big town that wants to win and he'll make rash decisions. But for the most part, he's nowhere near like Jerry Jones. He's not an instigator. If you do a good job, he's going to stay away. He's not going to get involved. But the team has been so bad that he gets involved, and when he gets involved, people say, "Well, you're getting too involved." So uh, he I, certainly he certainly isn't cheap. He's no, he he's pays not. a lot of money. Yeah, he, I mean, this guy is putting out money. He cares. He wants yeah. to win. But the decisions now. With, and look at the their defense. Their defense was really good, and then they they figure, "Oh, we got quarterback problems." They draft, yep. you know, Wilson. <laughs> that didn't work out, yep. and the, the backups didn't work out. And they go, oh, "We're going to get Aaron Rodgers." But the problem is Aaron Rodgers is, a, first of all, he's, he's a he's good-looking guy with a lot he's of old. talent and a lot of money, yeah. and he's older, and he's not he's not the time, he's not Tom Brady at 40 years old. No. He took care of his body, ate right, worked out right. This is a different human being. And when you look at him, he doesn't have the same dedication. But also they have offensive line issues, and it, it, you got – it takes a lot of good decisions and a lot of luck to make this work. Now, they get rid of Sala, who, by the way, Sala is a very, very good coach, a defensive, defensive coach. Defensive coach, yeah. Okay. I mean, he comes from the Niners, for God's oh, sake. Oh, yeah. Okay. He go And their defense was really top-notch. The Jets That's had a good, really good defense. They get rid of him. Their defense has fallen off a cliff. 
Absolutely. Now, Everybody. Even, though, yeah, even I, though he was he was a head coach, not yep. the defensive coordinator, he had a lot of input. But they're a disaster. Yep. Arizona scored 31 points. They didn't even need, even need four quarters to do that. They're yeah. sad, they're starters. I mean, this is this is unbelievable. And by the way, isn't this an important uh, uh, topic, though, to let people in on regarding? I know you, especially Mark Lawrence, who who really a lot of his uh, picks has a lot to do with numbers. He goes in and, and he, nobody does a better job of getting historical numbers and putting them together and making sense of them and making them work. But, and then there are other handicappers that go with different philosophies and you have your philosophy, but one, one philosophy or one, one aspect that's very important is, is to have a pulse of a team during a certain part of the season. Like now, like which teams look like they just have no confidence. Dallas Cowboys, New York Jets. We can go down the line. Teams that you just, why would you want to invest money in teams that are fragile psychologically? That's something at this time of year that's very important to keep an eye on. No question. Now, if you take a look at New England is going, you know, they're, they're going to play, they played Chicago yesterday. Chicago scored three points. I mean, New England, this isn't the New England no. check and Brady. This no. is a different New England. You know, so I mean there's a team with no confidence. There's there's a there's a lot of that going Jacksonville. on. Jacksonville. No confidence. It's unbelievable. So now you, the the betters, which I I try to stay away from these teams unless they're dogs playing another kind of garbage team. Like I've had Carolina. Plus the points yesterday. <laughs> because why, why should the Giants be playing, a seven I'm point favorite the over anybody? Six and a half point favorite. How can you make the Jets favorite at Arizona? How can yeah. you make the Giants favorite by this almost seven over, over anybody? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at that and you say, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it, it it really and it really doesn't. I think a lot of people bet because the numbers. They don't even look at the teams. They look at the numbers and they say, ah, you know, that that's too much. And you know, I'll, I'll let but professional betters, there's this, there's there's a group of professional betters like that, that look at they don't even look at the team's names. Yeah, they look at numbers. It's all about stats, yeah. analytics, stats. You know, and, and like Mark handicaps by using a lot of trends and 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 back going back years of what happens after this team plays this team. Yeah. And Mark has had a successful career doing that. I'm kind of a loose cannon. I look at games because I watch every game. Sometimes I watch the same game three times just to see what I'm missing from the offensive and defense. I'm looking – I'm an old-school guy. Well, I've been in the business 60 years almost, then there's 60 years. Yeah, I'm an old-school guy, of course. So blocking, tackling, catching, throwing, who's, who pressure – who handles pressure well when the offensive line doesn't protect you? And the, all that stuff, look, and that that all matters to me. So, And I don't look at history very much at all, although I do read it. I mean, I read the, the playbook every week. I read yeah. the gold sheet every week. I read everything. I'm a voracious reader. But I put it in here, and then I put it in with what I saw. Now, I haven't had... I haven't had a – last year I had a super great year up to, the you know, the midpoint. This year I've had a kind of a marginal year. Now, I'm on a pretty good streak. The last 34 plays, I'm 24 and 10 in, in all sports that I'm, I'm doing right now. So that's a good streak. But that's – this is how it goes. And in the, when you're a sports better, and I've been like a six, de six decades, every dollar that you make today – it's on. It's not like taking a paycheck and taking it home and you know sure. putting in the bank and paying your bills. Yeah. Every dollar you make, you're reinvesting yeah. the next day, the next yeah. hour. Like I must, I probably made thirty college basketball plays today, and like the season just started. I mean, so anything that I've made, it's just constant reinvesting, reinvesting, yes. reinvesting. Yeah. And, and, and I wish I'd put it all in Bitcoin because it's up to eighty four thousand today. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, that would have been a better investment. Yeah, but it's 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 a it's a different kind of a game, and you got to be able to handle stress of being up and down, up That's and true. down, up and down. And you and can't you, give up. Really, yep, it's not easy.
Nope. And if you're confident in what you're doing, you got to stay the course. Uh, and uh, that's what it's all about. There were some uh, key parts of last week's games. Matter of fact, uh, the, the week started with that Cincinnati Baltimore game where Cincinnati decided to go for two, which seemed like it was the right call. The only thing that I just, you know, sometimes whenever these teams make these really big decisions to go for two, as a fan, you always have it in the back of your mind that, well, it's a huge two-point play. They must have some really, they must have devised some really good play here that they've been working <laughs> on for a few weeks to, 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 just pl- to just use it against the perfect team in the perfect spot. And then you see Cincinnati, like such a huge play, and it's like they throw to the number three tight end because the one option was being held, which he was. You know, I forget which receiver. So there, there were penalties that weren't called in that. Yeah, there was, the guy was being mugged. Burrow gets knocked in the head. Nothing called. He throws the ball too high to Tanner Hudson, and they lose the football game. So what did you think? You think that was the right call? I'm assuming you did going for two. Well, first of all, it, it, you got to remember. look at the score. It's 35-34. If you end up giving the ball back to the Ravens, they have a great field goal kicker. They have a great hit. They got a they got a good head coach, very very good head coach. They got a great quarterback. They got a running back that's just dynamic. It, it, he's, he's he's huge. The man's almost three hundred pounds. He runs like a deer. He's he's incredible. So I'm, and they weren't able to stop them the whole game. No. So well, if you if you half, give yeah. the, if you give your defense is probably not going to be able to hold them. Now you go back a different game, which was earlier, I think the same week, where Tampa Bay was at Kansas City, and they had the same situation, and they chose to kick the extra point and go to overtime, and I thought that was a huge mistake, yeah. and I'll tell you why. First of all, you're on the road, and you're in Kansas City, so you're not, you, you, to some degree, the, the refs are influenced by the crowd noise and all, I mean, to some degree, I don't know to what degree, not that home field has that big number that it used to have years ago as an advantage, but if you kick that extra point, you're going to overtime against who? Oh, the same team that won two Super Bowls. Yeah. You got Andy Reid and Spagnola, and you got Mahomes, and you got Kelsey, and you got all that stuff going on. Now I'm going to try. I'm going to play an extra period, basically, against the best in the world. Yes. Why the hell would I want to do that? I, I, no I mean, I went into the game a nine-point underdog, so you know damn well you really are fortunate to be in this situation. And one play, especially when the team that's leading your division is already ahead of you by two games, if you want to catch them, you need to win this game. And you're fortunate to be right there one play to do it. And they kick the extra point, but but that's the the head coach is a conservative guy, yeah, yeah. and I thought it was a huge mistake. The, I think that Cincinnati had a different situation because a they're not as good in many ways as the team they were playing, and they had not been able to stop them at all. No, and you can't. And the Ravens' number one the offense. I mean, you're not going to stop them. Yeah, hardly anybody stops. We them. don't even know but, if they got the two point conversion. If, if Baltimore, they had 35 seconds, they could have gotten to field goal range and won the game in regulation. That's the other factor. If you give them 30, I think it was actually 38 seconds. Yeah. You give Mahomes 38 seconds, and all they need is a field goal to beat you. Even if you get the two point conversion right yeah. there, you're probably going to lose anyway. So. The, the timeout that he called at 38 seconds was a mistake. Yes. If he was going to go for two, he should have let it go down to like 10. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, it, just in case. Because yeah. now if I get to two, they're not going to have enough time to move the ball down the field. Yeah. Again, yeah, I so think they made the a lot of mistakes in that. To play. me, it was the call. I, I don't understand the play call. I don't understand that you no, have. That this is so what you devise on a big two point conversion. Is your second option is the number three tight end? I mean, come on, you got to come up with something better than that. Um, and then speaking of Tampa Bay, and, and and also speaking of former Cleveland quarterbacks, it is just so great to see what Baker Mayfield has become. Because what he did on that final drive, 
and they didn't they didn't win, but they almost did. But what he did to get that team in position to win that you couldn't, game. You couldn't get him on the ground. It was amazing. He, you know, he is, first of all, in college, he was a great player. Then he got drafted. He goes up, he goes to Cleveland. Well, Cleveland is not known for having great coaching, great leadership. They've been, they've been a mess for as long as I've been in this business, which is six decades. They've been a mess. Two years ago, they had a roster that actually could have gone to the Super Bowl. They were, they were good. Yeah. They had offensive line, running backs, everything going. They were on the rise. Baker was on the rise. Then the owner comes along and he says, huh, I got this guy over here that's got 27 charges against him for sexual something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not criminal charges, but civil sure. charges. They never charged him criminally. I'm going to pay him $253 million and I'm going to guarantee the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All so right. is, that the, is, that the, is that the formula? Have all these charges against you be a decent quarterback and I'm going to get $253 million. Are you crazy? See, this is this is the kind of garbage that, that's up. you got these rich ego guys that yeah. have done so well in their businesses and they think they know everything. Yeah, you can't tell I mean, me this that. is the same. This is the same group that drafted Johnny Manziel, oh, who yeah. everybody wow. knew was nothing but a partier in college. It was too small to play in the NFL, and never dedicated enough to play in the NFL. But they drafted him number one. Well, look, they got it right with Baker. The problem is, and you just talked about it with Luck, is. After they made the playoffs and finally broke all of those years of not getting to the postseason, they get to the postseason with Baker, and everything is looking bright for the future of the Cleveland Browns. What happens? Baker gets hurt. And as soon as that happened, for those two years, he was a mess. And then all of a sudden, he's a bust, and then everybody's hearing it. He's hearing it. They get rid of him. They feel this is the best thing for the franchise. Is let's just get rid of him. And look at what he's become now that he's healthy. He, he And who knows how things really, because keep in mind, the same guy who's the coordinator for him right now was also on the staff as with the Rams the year Baker was there. Uh, because uh, Cohen was, the, was, the, was, I believe he was the coordinator uh, for McKay that year. Then the next year, the first year Baker was in Tampa, Cohen went to Kentucky for a year. The second year, it was this year. Cohen became the offensive coordinator of the Bucks, But that is something that they developed the relationship in Tampa somehow. I mean, in, in L.A. And it must have been a good one, obviously. And uh, Baker got healthy. And now look at look at Baker. I mean, it's a great story. But it also shows you how luck comes into play. Because if Baker never got hurt, he would still be probably the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. And maybe the Browns would be playing back-to-back-to-back postseasons. That's a stretch. That's <laughs> you're talking about the Cleveland Browns, but they were good. Then they were a playoff team last year, as we talked about. Playoff team with Baker using, the first year. using five quarterbacks last year. Five, yeah. Blackwell got that was impressive. Got there. Five quarterbacks. That's it. So, yeah. what did you think about um, the another game that you talked about, Pittsburgh and Washington? Crazy game because you had those special teams coming into play left and right. With they're going for a, a fake. Uh, punt on their own 10 yard line, which, uh, which obviously everybody would have loved if, if it would have been successful. Uh, you also had the muff for Washington that even things out. He had all sorts of bunch of crazy turnovers and so forth. He got the, he got the fumble on the one yard line by Pittsburgh going in. Yep. Fumble. I mean, yeah. And, and yet uh, Pittsburgh uh, found a way to win the football game. It was a very good football game. And he was two really good football teams who maybe we'll see them again in the Super Bowl. Who is better at scratching out a one, two, or three point victory with in, in grinder out games than Tomlin? It, but, he's, and he's, he's, very, a, he's, he's also very underrated. It's amazing how the people just don't look at him as this well, really good coach. He, he, he never has all the best tools. He just does a great job with what amazing. he has. He, yeah. You know, you look at his quarterbacks. Other than Roethlisberger, yeah, you know, he, that's it. But, you know, yeah. I mean, you got to go back a long way. That I can't even think of somebody that would be top notch except Roethlisberger. Mitch and, Trubisky. And, uh, who else? Did he have? Did he have Charlie Batch? I think he had well, Charlie I, Batch. You know, you, 
you got to go back 15 years. I, he's been there 15 years. So it, it's been a lot of marginal quarterbacks. But it has. And but he's... now with Wilson, you got a two time Super Bowl quarterback that had and still obviously has a lot of talent, but needed the proper coaching. Yep. Now, stability. You, Stability you, you in the organization. You, yeah, well, stability is definitely there with Pittsburgh. But then you look at Denver and you say, well, hell, he was there with Peyton, who's also a good coach, but not the same length of time that Tomlin's had in the league. But he wasn't able to do anything with him. But Tomlin has. It's amazing. Yeah, looking at the uh, – once Roethlisberger retired – uh, which actually was just a few years ago. So since then, um, the last several years, uh, it's been basically Pickett, uh, Trubisky, uh, and of course, uh, really, I think I, I think there was another quarterback, Rudolph. Rudolph, Pickett, and Trubisky there the last few years, and yet the team still found a way uh, to go a combined uh, 19 and 15 in those two years uh, with those quarterbacks and that type of quarterback play. Because Pickett was a was a rookie who uh, didn't have, like, the greatest tools, uh, and yet it, they just found a way. And that's the reason why um, it's a lot easier to, 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 to play with these types of quarterbacks when you have stability in the organization. You're used to winning, and there's a winning vibe, and there's a winning culture. It's, it's a lot easier to – especially, and then you bring in a talent like Russell Wilson on top of that. And this should be no surprise that the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing. And I saw them last week. I'm going to go check. I want to update because could you believe last week? Uh, let's take, I'm going to take a look at their futures here. Last week, I could not believe when I looked at it, they were 33 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Um, and if you can still get, of course, we're only talking about it right now. I'm going to pop it up on the screen so everybody can see. I'm going to take a look at the current futures. I know you're not a big future guy, but. Let's take a look at the Super Bowl odds here now. And the Steelers are still a very good 22 to 1 to win this. That is a really good number. 22 to 1 to win the Super Bowl if you if you want to take the Pittsburgh or the Washington Commanders. Look at the Chargers at 35 to 1. We haven't even talked about how good the Chargers have been and how why are the Chargers playing well? Because they hired uh, a good Harbaugh. Coach. They got Harbaugh. And then when you look at that, well, of course, you got to consider Pittsburgh is playing in a very – well, it, it looked like a very difficult division, but right now it's only a two-team division who – by the way, we're not talking about this week's coming lines, but Pittsburgh is actually a home dog to Baltimore this week. Yep. Oh, uh, that is – oh, that's right. That is that uh, – that has that trend, doesn't it? Now that I'm thinking about it, that has that long trend that we'll talk about on Thursday's show. And you can catch that over on uh, ProLine YouTube, ProLine TV uh, YouTube channel, or, or Playbook uh, uh, ATS, Playbook Experts. But we're going to talk about this trend. The, the, the Pittsburgh of Baltimore has this for years. It goes back. I believe the dog in this series has covered like an amazing amount of uh, games. And let and, me and, po let, let's point this out. Just above Pittsburgh, three lines above Pittsburgh, you got the Ravens at plus six hundred. Yeah, exactly. But yet Pittsburgh, exactly. Pittsburgh is it pretty damn close to them. Well, the the, the record is almost the same. It's very yeah. one game off. I think one game one team has played one more game than the other because they had the bye week. But it that's a big difference in price. Ravens and Steelers. For, for somebody, somebody's playing like them. That's a really big difference. Now, you look at the Chargers, of course, the Chargers got to figure out a way to overcome. Uh, well, with Denver losing the other day, now you get Kansas City is going to walk away with that division unless something dramatic happens. But they could definitely get in the playoffs. Oh, uh, they could do damage. See, right now would be – this is where you would go in and say, okay, when you consider – the Steelers could win that division and getting winning the division would set them really up well in the playoffs rather than a wild card. But even if they get in as a wild card, they're going to be dangerous 
and I can take twenty two to one. And man, man, I gotta I gotta think yeah. about that. And we're not talking about a full season anymore. We're talking about eight more games. I've just gone back and I'll do I'll do I'll get a more correct one. But the trend actually ended at the end of the regular season last year in that regular season game between Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Now remember, keep this in mind. Pittsburgh was the two-point favorite at Baltimore because Baltimore was resting everybody because the game meant nothing to them and Pittsburgh needed the win to go to the playoffs. That's the only way this train this trend ended. Before that, they were on a run of and I'm going to I'm just adding it up here. 7 wins and eight covers in eight games. So the dog was seven and one straight up, eight and zero oh against the spread. The previous eight in the series, and I guarantee I'm, you, I gu- I'm guarantee you, Mark will write about that in his new absolutely, book. and we will be talking about it. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of another game that we'll talk about on Thursday, is the unbelievable trend that is going on with the Chiefs being a dog, because they're a dog again. And the Chiefs, under Andy Reid, as a dog, I, I believe – I don't even know if they've ever lost because we talked about it with the San Francisco game just a few weeks ago. It was like, how can you not take the Chiefs? Look at this record. Andy Reid is a dog. He never loses. He never loses to Shanahan too, but that was the different thing. So we'll talk about that. The Chiefs, as a dog, are like an unbelievable record. Okay, well, let me, let me throw a caveat in here. The Chiefs, as a one-point dog, to me, is not a dog. Well, yeah, I, okay, get that. I understand I get that. the yeah. number says they're a dog. Yeah. But unless they win that game, the chances straight up, if they don't win the game straight up, the chances are they're not going to cover the number because that's not enough of a number. They're going to so win. Yeah. they got to win the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and technically, they're a dog. But – Oh, here it is as a road dog. They are now, they have covered now seven, eight, at least nine straight going back to 2020 as a road dog. And a lot of those are wins because I'm not to- totaling this up well, right they, now. They don't, Andy Reid doesn't lose very much. No. <laughs> so when Andy Reid goes on the road as a dog, he basically wins every, every time with the Chiefs. So that's something we'll talk about later in the week. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, keep, in, keep in mind that, uh, speaking of the Pittsburgh-Washington game, that uh, the, their edge rusher, Highsmith, he's going to be out a couple of weeks. So uh, he's banged up uh, and, and really disappointed to see Tristan Wirfs. We saw him walk off the field, limp off the field for Tampa Bay. They have enough issues on their offensive line. It's just a shame to see Wirfs now. I, we don't have a word yet on whether or not he's going to miss time. But if Tampa Bay loses Tristan Wirfs, uh, for an extended period of time, then you're in big trouble. So, well, that's a that's a other than Atlanta having a pretty good year, although their field goal kicker missed a whole bunch of field goals yesterday that cost them. Um, that's that's still a wide open division, and um, anything could happen there. I mean, they're close enough to still sneak in there. Next eight weeks, I mean, is going to determine a lot. But Baker Mayfield is. Playing great ball if he if he gets if he has enough help you know they they've been without their number one and one number two uh, wide receivers also. yes yeah and they almost beat the, and they and they came that close to beating the Niners without Mike Evans and Godwin which and is they, and they also almost beat the Chiefs in Kansas City that's right I mean they're a pretty good team yeah so Tampa Bay uh, if it, it, again this is the thing it's just a, a lot of times there's a luck involved you got to stay away from injuries. The Bucs have just not been able to stay away from injuries, just like Houston. You know, Houston put up that great effort last night, and yet their best defensive players out and their best offensive players out. And they had a huge lead against the hottest team in the NFL. So, But, but how do they go the entire second? Well, no, I watched the game, so I know what happened. But when you have to ask the question, how do you go the whole half without scoring a point? Yeah, that's uh... – that, that, that does, uh, maybe how do you, how do, you little, do that? Yeah, well, I tell you what, this, this Lions team looks awfully good right now. Well, I think people people need to consider 
there's another part to the Lions that no one talks about. Their defense has been playing lights out. Even without us. They, sh they shut down the Packers in Green Bay. They shut down Texans in Texas in the second half. They are playing some great football. They are the right now. They are the best team in football. I agree. And now, what are they getting? They go heads up at four, 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 you know, four, against four. Kansas City. The Chiefs, some of that can't. Well, of course they can, but you're going to be going against somebody like Spagnola and Reed and Mahomes and Kelsey, people that actually know how to win championships, and. The knowing how to win at the at the highest level is gives you a that pedigree that change that makes you different because a lot of times people need to get there a number of times before they really learn how to win, in, even though they might even be better. Uh, by the way, uh, we'll have our game on our, our show on Thursday, but keep in mind there is a big game on Thursday night. It's Philly and Washington, so that's another game to look out for. Um, I know, of course, you'll have um, a, a little bit of a take on it uh, when you uh, put out your early observation video. That's the early review on week 11. Again, that's going to be available on the channel, um, on your channel, so look out for that. But, yeah, that, there's a few big games coming up this week, and that's definitely one of them. You mentioned Pittsburgh and, and Baltimore. You got Washington and Philly on Thursday. You got the Bills oh. and the Chiefs on Sunday. Great and even game. that, and even that Bengals Charger Sunday night game is going to be a really good game because the Bengals need that one bad, and uh, the Chargers are playing great football. So. You got you, you have to wonder the, the Bengals. I mean, at some point, I mean, been kicked in the head so much this year. It, they are so good offensively, uh, but their defense, man, I'll tell you, yeah. They, they they leave a lot to be desired on the defensive end. Yeah, it's amazing because look at this. Burrow had 428 yards passing and four touchdowns. Look at Jamar Chase, 264 yards, three touchdowns, I'm, I'm 11 receptions, and he lost. He is one hell of a player, that guy. I mean, he's uh, – but they, they didn't have Higgins, and they probably won't have him again this week. That's, that's the thing. Higgins is going to be a free agent next year. Who would pay that guy? Someone will, but who would invest a lot of money in a guy that can't seem to stay healthy? Well, th th there are a lot of players. I mean, come on. We, we all know that everybody's got a different attitude. Every person isn't the same. We've got a lot of personalities in this world, and we can't figure out any of them. But some people will play hurt for the good of the team. Others yeah. will have an ingrown toenail and yeah. not play. It, How surprised it, were you that this bill line, I mean, it was, it, it had gotten down to three before the weekend. And then on game day, when everybody goes in to make those final bets and they, you know, you, maybe your college games have something to do with your bankroll and you're all right, you're, you're opening the thing on Sunday and you're looking at your book and you're just going through the lines and you're going, the, that's right. The bills are favored by three. I'm picking the bills. That line shot up to like four and a half on Sunday, I believe it was. I'm not sure if it got any higher than that. But I was kind of surprised it ever went down to three. Weren't you a little bit surprised that it was it, three? Oh, well, it was, it, was a, it was a tough situation because Flacco had played terrible the week before. And we're talking about the, the, Colts, the Colts game. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, the Bills were looking ahead. Could have, could have been looking ahead to playing Kansas City. Could have. Could have. Okay, so – and with the history of them against Kansas City, you know it's got to be on their mind because they haven't been able to beat them. So you know they're thinking about it. <laughs> and this is a non-division road favorite at the Colts who were looking terrible, and they're fighting to try to win. But it, I'm, I'm shocked at how bad Flacco is playing. Yeah. Compared to – he played a couple good games for them, and then, of course, last year. But there is an aging issue, and and – now, you also have different coaching issues, and but I, I'm shocked at how poorly he's playing. And, and we both agree that they yeah. basically the way he's playing, they should put Richardson back in, even though the kid really isn't ready to play at this level yet. Uh, before I let you go and we put a wrap on this, tonight's game, uh, you've got Miami and the Rams. I believe the Rams are a two-point favorite. 
Uh, Victor King, of course, Victor uh, is on the playbook uh, show every Thursday. And Victor is uh, the totals. Uh, I guess he calls himself the totals guy. I think he'd come up with a little snazzier nickname in that, but uh, the over under guy, the totals guy, but that he, that's what he is. He, he's because he, he can say that because he's the guy. Uh, nobody. Well, there, that, well there's nobody. After. There's no one else that does and focuses just on totals, and he, yep. he does a tremendous job. And if you did not yet, which you should, order uh, Mark Lawrence's, and I'll have a link in the description of the video where you can take a look and order uh, Mark's uh, daily coffee club emails. Uh, he had this in there from Victor uh, regarding Victor's playbook totals tip sheet football newsletter. The Rams are 0-4 under the total when they when they take on Miami, and the Rams are also 0-4 under the total on Monday nights. The Dolphins are 0-6 under the total after facing Buffalo and 0-4 under the total before facing the Raiders. So there's a lot of unders uh, in there for Victor. So the over-under is 48 and a half. That's what I, I was able to get it at. I obviously went with the under. I don't do totals too much. But when I see something like that, all right, I'll put a few bucks on the under. Why not? It, it those statistics, those st statistics and trends and look, you know, looking backwards at what, what has happened. Would see I I look at that game and I with the offensive tools, Stafford is a better quarterback in in my mind. The wide receivers are pretty equal. I like McVay oh, uh, yeah. as a as a better oh, coach. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so I'm home. I got McVay and I got Stafford. Their advantages. And the better record. Yes. And well, they've also Miami's come yeah, off two injury. of being out for yeah. a number. Of, so I have to kind of throw some of that stuff sure. out. Yeah. But and then I look at the speed of these wide receivers that Miami has, and you really can't cover them. If they get loose, they're, they're gone. You know, that's the – so when I look at that game, other than weather conditions, which I don't believe is a factor at this moment, yeah. you never know. They're on the – I mean, they're playing that's right LA. next to the Pacific Ocean. but So you never know what could happen there, but we've got to check it later. I would look at that and say that's an over bet. However, the trends that you're mentioning lean under. So there's been a lot of over money come in on this game, by the way. Yeah, I, but I it's pretty high myself. Yeah. But they don't, it's been up and down. I've seen 40, you know, it's up and down. But pe people are number betters. I mean, yeah. they look at this and they say, this got to be a 50 point game. Other people say, ah, 45, 46, 47, maybe. So th there's different. That's why the bookmakers make money because they're they getting ten percent juice on each end. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> to to that degree, it helps them make money. But the, yeah. most betters are losers anyway, so they make money because of that too. But so I favor the over, but I don't favor the over at the highest line. You know, I'm gonna, I'm I'm going to shop for the numbers, and if I miss a number, I'm not going to chase it. However, in today's day and age, we do have what called in-game betting. So let's say you start the game off and it's 3-3 in the first quarter. And they start changing that number around. And all of a sudden you see, hmm, they're putting up a number that would be more along the lines of 43-44 if you played the whole game. And you, and you kind of think this these offensive tools, nobody got hurt in the first quarter. This might explode because the offensive coordinators are going to make adjustments. Sure. They're going to say, okay, We've been playing this scheme, but they're playing that scheme on defense, so let's adjust what we're doing. And all of a sudden, you see a quarter with 24 points. Yep. <laughs> so now you're up to 30 at halftime, which obviously you got a bargain. So, I mean, I know somebody that made that yesterday betting live in-game wagering made 102 bets in-game. You mean like all day or with one yeah, game? all day, six okay. hours, 102 live in-game wagers. Wow. I mean, this person's a maniac. He's got six screens and uh, yeah, nobody I can imagine. will answer sure. no phones and he's, he's betting everywhere and 102 bets in six hours live. 
Well, I hope he made a lot of money off of it. He did actually. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't lose very much. Yeah, yeah he's pretty good. By the way, the Rams, uh, believe it or not, as good as we've been touting the AFC, and, and the AFC still might be the better, have the better teams, but uh, or at least you know the, the the top teams. The fact is, is that the NFC has a better playoff picture because the Rams and the Niners are on the outside of the playoffs. Right now, the Niners are a game behind Green Bay, and the Rams are a game and a half behind Green Bay. So this is a big game for the Rams, and it's also huge for Miami because this would put them at three and six, and that would move them to uh, just a half game behind eighth place Colts and Cincinnati and uh, put them uh, a game and a half behind Denver for the final spot. And considering their schedule is pretty simple, the second half of the season, Miami, and with Tua back, it's a big game for them too. So it's a big game tonight for both teams. Keep in mind, it's very important, Tyreek Hill, from what I've heard, is a game-time decision. And so, that's huge. That's a huge – that's yeah. that's huge. Especially now, with, the, with the total. If, if he were – if you could get a little information that he were, wasn't playing or – would play at maybe 60 or 70% of who he is, that would help your under. Yeah, absolutely. Because he, yeah, he, uh, is, he is absolutely impossible to, to defend if he breaks loose behind the defense. You can't yeah, stop him. You can't get him. I, I, I was trying to find out in the last closing minutes or the last uh, hour, if, uh, if I know you, you, are, you weren't paying a lot of attention to college this year, but the Georgia Tech Miami game, because Georgia Tech had their starting quarterback out. He hadn't played in like three weeks. Haynes King, he's everything to that offense, everything. So it was now a game time decision. And the line <clears throat> was like 11 all week, 11 and a half. So I, I'm getting no news. Um, I'm, I'm on the internet. I'm trying to find any news I can get. I'm getting nothing. So finally, I go to my sports book account. It's about a half hour before the game. And I see the line is now nine. I got my answer. I didn't need any. Somebody knows something somewhere that he's mm -hmm. playing, and uh, and that's all I needed because I, I went with the money line anyway over the over the nine because of the fact that um, I just again I like Georgia Tech as a, as a dog. They've had a lot of upsets the last few years with this coach, and last year they had some key upsets. And um, and Miami was vulnerable. Everybody knew it. Um, but anyway, that shows you another way that take a look at the line. Look at the line tonight. If you don't hear anything, well, what is the, the line can tell you whether Tyree kills playing tonight, half hour before the game. So if you see Very that true. drop, there's always somebody that knows something. Yeah. So, all right, uh, Jim, appreciate your time. Look forward to, uh, I thought we, uh, we had a nice little run here. Something we can do every week. I think that'd be a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. And it's, it's good talking to you about sports. And, and when we get to the, the final 12 for college, I will get involved. Okay. Because it's Looking easier to, to do 12 teams than it is 200. Well, you teams. can't miss the first 12 team playoff, Jim. <laughs> I'm not going to. And you know what? The reason I backed off this year is because of the realignment and all the things. Transfers. That, a lot of yeah. your traditional stuff went away yeah. because of it. And I said, you know, I'm just going to focus on what I do best. I mean, baseball's always been good for me. Pro NFL's always been good. And, and, uh, and 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 then college basketball, of course. And I said, well, I'm not going to try to figure all this out without any history between a lot of these clubs. And, and I said, well, I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to follow some people. And and there are some people that work really hard at it. And I help them with the pros. They help me with the colleges. And I've had a pretty good college year without doing any work <laughs> except following them, which I kind of like this. <laughs> there you go. So and then. I've been a little bit disappointed at the chopping all the time in the, in the NFL, but this week was excellent. So um, it, it's, it's maybe it's turned around now. Well, and there were some really fun games in college too. Watching BYU uh, win that game late on Saturday night was crazy. Awesome atmosphere in Utah watching that rivalry. Oh, that, uh, that is a hell of a rivalry. Yeah. Think. That really is. And just, by the way, did you happen to notice how that game ended? No, I did not. Yeah, there was uh, BYU had a. They were get. They were the Utah's defense. The crowd's going crazy. Their defense was just on top of BYU for the last quarter. The guy was running for his life the whole quarter. 
They're deep in their own territory. They're at their own 10. It's fourth down now. They haven't had a successful play in like a quarter. And they're, it, it, they're going down. He goes back to pass. This linebacker comes shooting in, basically just tosses the running back away, knocks the quarterback down, incomplete pass. Everybody's going crazy. Flag. <laughs> the defensive, <laughs> uh, the cornerback for Utah had held the wide receiver during the play. BYU first down. What does BYU do? March down the field, get a kick the game winning field goal, and won the game as time expires. The kid, and you know what? Undefeated. There, there's a there's a room at Bellevue in New York. It's called for insane sports betters. <laughs> it's because and we all belong in there because you never know what the hell's going to happen with these referees. By the way, going. that was one of those situations that you've talked about before too. With and I actually did it too. I did it on a parlay I was doing with with BYU, and I did that because it was the last game, and I didn't want to do BYU um, uh, straight, but. I, I, I don't know. I just felt, you know what? Let me, let me, let me, I already, it's already the end of the day. There was a couple of things I was doing on Sunday. Let me just do BYU and then get, get my day started if they win. So I took the money line and the money line was about minus 165. I think it was, yeah, minus 165. Now, if I had taken the three, I lose. But this is something that you've talked about a, a lot before. And you get into these situations where, even though the money line, even though it's it's just minus one sixty five, some people might go. I got to put up sixteen bucks to make ten. That's that's a lot. But is would you rather win or lose? The thing is, you do it every day in baseball, because almost I mean, yeah, they have they have run lines, but most people will lay two to one, one eighty, one ninety in, in baseball all the time. Why not do it in a football game instead of lay, laying three or two and a half or three? Take just take the money line. If you now, if you like the dog, you take the three, three and a half. You know because now you got you got that going for you with a lot less juice and you have the potential of staying close and winning. But why would you? Why in God's name would you lay two and a half or three when you can play the money line? It's the same thing in playing a baseball game. You're you're laying juice. Yeah. So what? Yeah. I mean, I, I do that all the time. Yeah. So. Anyway, we're out of here. Uh, we'll see everybody again on this particular broadcast next Monday for all the other videos you can watch this week. Not only, of course, on the Our Lads football channel, uh, which I'm going to start doing a lot more uh, player videos to take a look at the 2025 NFL draft and also just get everybody up to speed on what's going on in college with a lot of players and a lot of really interesting players that maybe you don't get an opportunity to uh, keep uh, uh, updated with. But also, of course, Jim's going to have his videos, uh, which you can check out over on ProLine uh, TV, the YouTube channel, Playbook Experts YouTube channel. Check out our show on Thursdays with Mark Lawrence. And then we'll be back again here next Monday. Uh, we'll do this again. So thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, thanks a lot, Jim. Appreciate it. Well, pre I appreciate this, too. I had a lot of fun. Good talking to you. Good luck.